English, you sir. New York's best. Join the seventh militia, gentlemen. New York's best. No luck there, soldier. No, sir. And war with the rebels any day now, sir. I should suggest a more persuasive tone. Or a more persuasive tune. Why remind the gentleman that John Brown's molding in the bay? Right you are, Lieutenant. He's always right. <laughs> Come now, something lively. That's better. Hands off the girls of Italy and Spanish eyes are thrift. Still, though I best beneath their smiles, their charms never buy me. And I promise never to gainsay the girl I left behind me. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's where I leave you, sailor. My respect to your uncle. And mine to your father. My sister Constance? That, Raymond, is a matter I shall attend to personally. There'll be a moon in Central Park tonight. And Julie? And Constance? Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye. <laughs> Many times must. Kenneth! <laughs> roast the fatted calf, Uncle John. I'm home on leave. Don't worry, I roast you plenty. <laughs> well, how was the trip? Oh, it was a grand trip, sir. The Merrimack's mighty seaworthy. Yeah, <laughs> so it's Noah's Ark. <laughs> okay, what are you standing there for? Take the bellows. The fire is dying down. So you, uh, you like the Merrimack, eh? Why, Uncle, she's the greatest ship afloat. There never was or ever will be a ship of war that can stand up to it. Quiet, we don't talk now. We pour. Wooden ships, bah, you talk like one of those empty office admirals in Washington. <laughs> Here. Look. A plan of my new ironclad. Simple? I will explain it like ABCs. Here is a cross section of a submerged... Uncle, we're going to spend a great deal of time together on this leave. But right now... You just came and you want to run away. You got something more important? Well, uh, if you don't mind, the Commodore... I'm not to mind the Commodore, but you mind the Commodore's daughter, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Well, her brother's on leave, too, and we have something more interesting than ships. Well, <laughs> have a good time. But tomorrow you don't get away so easy. Right. Goodbye. Yeah. Is my skating so bad? It's far too good. I've been waiting for something romantic to happen. Like? Uh, like you're falling down. Kenneth! Just so that I could hold you in my arms. I'm going to sit comfortably here until Raymond comes along. Raymond will keep on the other direction. Acting under orders? Strictly. I'm his superior officer, you know. And he adores you. That, my dear, is something you should consider. He's talked of nothing but you since he got home. You must have Kenneth tell you this. You must have Kenneth tell you that. That he loves you? No, he didn't say that. He should. Why? Orders. <laughs> well, he's on leave. And so am I at the moment. Connie! Wait a minute! Golly! Oh. <laughs> well, you did it. You fell down. I'm afraid I did. <laughs> well, aren't you going to help me up? No. I'm going to sit comfortably here till Raymond comes along. On the ice? Why not? The thaw won't set until spring. Well, then I'll... <laughs> <laughs> Darling, you two better get up. You'll have pneumonia. Well, all I can say is their lips may be warm, but when they're going to have children laying to something else again? <laughs> Julie, I think that's terrible, eavesdropping like that. We weren't eavesdropping, Connie. We were just watching. Well, then I guess I'd better explain, you see. You're engaged. 
It's right here in the middle of the lake. Well, that is... Uh, Why, congratulations, sir. I just couldn't take a better man than you. She had us kind of worried being 23, unhitched, and still hanging around the house. I don't know how you do it, Connie. I've been falling down all evening, only to find that some folks can get engaged the minute they hit the ice. I advise you, sir, to make immediate report to the Commodore. I certainly am excited. This is so thrilling, it's left me speechless. Positively speechless. Why? Julie, I'm just trying to tell you that Connie hasn't accepted me yet. Oh, then you're not engaged. Oh, no, you, you see the... Uh, <laughs> yes, we are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Father, I want to tell you that I'm I... sorry, dear, but Captain Buchanan and I have an urgent call to watch you. Oh, Daddy, has something happened? I haven't time to talk now, honey, but everything's going to be all right. Raymond, take charge of things here. I wouldn't worry, darling. It may not be anything serious. Gentlemen, this is serious business. Delegates from six cotton states have met in Montgomery, Alabama, and formed the Confederate States of America. Virginia has called a state convention to decide whether or not she will secede. Among you gentlemen, there are two native-born Virginians. It is imperative that the affairs of the Navy Department be undertaken with no division of loyalty. I must therefore ask these two gentlemen to declare their intentions should their native state follow the course of her southern sisters. Captain Buchanan. The question raised by Mr. Secretary has been weighing heavily upon me these past few months. I was born in Virginia, the son of Virginians. Birth has determined my decision. As my state goes, so must I. It is with regret that I am compelled to tender my resignation from the United States Navy. Good night, gentlemen. And you, Commodore Jordan? I have seen 47 years service in the Navy. Until I was assigned to duty in the North, Captain Buchanan was my neighbor. Our children grew up together. I hope he will ever be my friend. I too have a kindred feeling for my home state, Virginia. But any section of the land over which old glory waves is my home. I gather from your words, sir, the sentiments of Stephen Decatur. My country, may she ever be right, but right or wrong, my country. Mr. President, I'm at your service. Long. Mr. Lincoln doesn't want war. I'm afraid your Mr. Lincoln has practically declared war. Raymond and Julie only have a few minutes left. Goodbye, Julie. Regardless of what's decided for us, we're still friends, aren't we? Goodbye, dear. Try to remember that wars were made by men, not women. Nothing can hurt our friendship and our love. Oh, Connie. Excuse me, Charlie. It's mighty close to start. We'll wait in the carriage. Julie, I... I reckon you hate me now, don't you? Honey, I couldn't hate you, because I love you. It's best we say goodbye, here. Aren't you going to let me put you on the train? 
Oh, Julie, what's happened to you? Don't you put your arms around me wearing that uniform. Once you were proud of my wearing this uniform. I haven't changed. You have. You'll be fighting against my father. You can't love me and aim to kill those I love. Come, Julie. It's time. <laughs> now, now. No tears. Goodbye, young man. Goodbye, sir. Didn't you take her to the train? She wouldn't let me. She wouldn't let me touch her. That's what it means, hate. Hate for those we love. She's just a little girl. She doesn't understand. Neither do I. Well... We better go, Raymond. The Commodore wants to see us. As the situation stands, we pray for peace while we prepare for war. All leave has been canceled. You'll return to your ship immediately. Yes, sir. Forts, arsenals, and other government property are being seized in the name of the Southern Confederacy. We must make every... Just a moment, sir. Before divulging further confidential matters, please hear what I have to say. This is a breach of conduct, sir. I'm giving orders. Sorry, sir. I'm not taken. Raymond! Sir! Because I'm resigning from the United States Navy. Raymond, you don't know what you're doing. I know that everything I hold dear belongs to Virginia. And so do I. You have sworn to defend the Constitution of the United States. I renounce that vow to fulfill a more sacred duty. You realize that your decision places us on opposing sides? I'll regret that deeply, sir. Ken, thanks for all you've taught me. I hope I'll make a worthy opponent. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, son. Report release to Captain Gilman in command of Gosport Navy Yard, Norfolk. In the absence of Captain Batterman and Captain Pearson, you will be placed in temporary command of USS Merrimack. Yes, sir. You realize the necessity of preserving for the Union the ship's armament and ammunition stored there? I do, sir. Then I needn't further stress the importance of this assignment. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Has his duty, and so have I. The strange idea of duty to rush out and kill. Oh, it isn't that. Raymond thinks it's his duty to take up arms against father, and you love me, and yet you think it's your duty to fight against my brother. Connie, there isn't any war yet, and if it happens, it won't last long. It'll be small comfort to the families who are destroyed. It's time for me to go now. You won't let me see you cry, will you? Don't let me see you leave. I I'll turn around and talk to you. A about the night... the night we were skating, and... you placed a rustic bench beneath the leafless tree, and I laughed, skated away, and... I fell down. Don't you realize, Captain Buchanan, every moment we delay may prove more costly than we know. That's right. With Norfolk Navy Yard in federal hands, our city can be shelled and destroyed in 24 hours. You young men are fired with excitement and eagerness. The fact is, war has not yet been declared. Not in so many words. But war is here, sir. It was actually begun when South Carolina fired on Fort Sumter. Well, yes, sir. Yeah, that it's war, sure now. Raymond knows. Virginia State militia is ready to act. I say, let's seize the Navy Yard! 
Gentlemen, you must not take violent action at this time. Now is the time for action. We, we want no more delay. Now. No more time. The time is not yet here. How can you say that, sir, when you know the North has declared a blockade on southern ports? And that means we'll be starved out in six months. You all got to wait for that? No! no. All right, then. We'll take Norfolk Navy Yard tonight. Are you with us, men? Yes! Yeah. This isn't official. Yes, sir. It's glad we all are to see you back, sir. Thank you. Look at it. Even Molly's recognized you. See the spark, lover. <laughs> no use, Molly. The lieutenant's engaged. <laughs> Although I still can't believe it. Why not? I always thought you were in love with the Merrimack. This old tub is mighty close to my heart. <laughs> Cosgrove, with a dispatch for Captain Gilman. Pass. Are you sure, Cosgrove? There are three regiments? Yes, sir. Fully armed? Yes, sir. Their advance guard will reach here at any moment. Three regiments. We'll never be able to hold out against such a force. Evans, Herford, Smith, each of you to take a detail. We must destroy the yard. Captain Gilman, did you say destroy the yard, sir? I did. This Navy yard isn't valuable to the Union. The loss in arms, equipment, and ammunition alone would be tremendous. Is it wise, sir, to destroy it? It is, rather than have it fall into Confederate hands. And when I wish for your advice, Lieutenant, I shall ask for it. Yes, sir. Now remember, not a single musket must be left to be salvaged by the enemy. Now hurry, hurry! That's insane. I can take her out of the harbor. Don't be a fool, Lieutenant. I'm not. With our guns trained on the city, we can keep them off till reinforcements arrive. You'll obey Captain Gilman's orders. My orders are to protect government property, not destroy it. Sound general quarters. Prepare to get underway. We're taking her to sea. Careful, Reynolds. After all, this is Gilman's responsibility. This ship is my responsibility. Yes, sir. That's open mutiny, sir. Captain Gilman ordered that you fire your ship without delay. Have you those orders in writing, sir? There wasn't time for writing. Then as commanding officer of this ship, I refuse to execute such verbal orders. All right, men. Fire the ship! <laughs> Help me! Help me! Give me your hand with you! Here! Help 
me some heavy heavy Put that gun down! Get off before you break your finger! I have punched an old punch without money! The man's dead! Come on! I, I call you to account for your actions. I'll answer to the Board of Inquiry. In your panic, you had us set a fire. I flooded her to save a Holland engine. Saved her for the enemy, to be raised as good as new. I charge you with conduct on becoming an officer, with insubordination and mutiny. Place him under arrest. In view of the fact that a state of war did not exist at the time such mutinous acts were committed, sentence is as prescribed in articles for the government of the United States Navy in time of peace. Therefore, it is the sentence of this court-martial that the defendant be dismissed from the United States Naval Service with a dishonorable discharge. Hello, Miss Adams. Hello, Miss Jordan. Don't bother to announce me. I'll go right down. If I may say so, Miss, it's like putting your head in the news. Still hard at it, huh? Night and day. They don't sleep, they won't eat. I'm fair worn out, ma'am. Maybe this will tempt them. Good luck. Oh, I'm not frightened. Come on, Betty. Steady, steady. Too late to make mistakes now. <coughs> Can I work in such a bedlam? Constance. You told me to come today, that it would be finished. And finished it is. Don't you look until she gets her top nut on. Behold the monitor. There it is. Oh, I, I've never seen anything quite like it. You're right. There never has been anything quite like oh, it. Oh, I am happy. I'm also very hungry. Mmm, one. Huh. I'm very happy. Oh, oh, that's to christen the monitor. Fine, you can break it over the bow and let the wine flow. Where does such good wine flows this way? <laughs> Are you going to take it to Washington? At once. Father says Mr. Bushnell is submitting plans for an ironclad, too. Bushnell? He's the biggest shipbuilder in all the land. But I'm the best. And besides, ships don't go on land. <laughs> the monitor. The monitor. The monitor. I will not bother to introduce myself because you all know who I am. Mr. Secretary of the Navy, we have met before. And Senator Pillsbury, I have had the misfortune to deal with. However, we have no time. My model. Mr. Erickson, we've examined your plans, but I fail to see how the guns can be fired from your ship. Why don't you study how to read plans? From the drawings, you will find it is from the revolving turret that we do the firing, through the narrow ports. One good shot against that turret, and there wouldn't be any firing. So? I show you. No shot can stop it. No matter how hard you hit the turret, it turns. That's quite all right, Captain Erickson. I'm sure your turret will work. But we've already awarded the contract to Bushnell. You have already awarded? Why, you... The committee has just approved the contract. Then you've made a mistake, a very bad mistake. Possibly. I shall be glad to resubmit your plans to the board. If Mr. Bushnell and his associates should fail us. Don't worry, he will. About warships, he knows even less than your committee. Fader. Fader! Yes, sir. Another. I know your capacity, Uncle John, but don't you think... What else is there for me to do but drink in a town like this? You keep me here surrounded by politicians and gold braiders? Why don't we go back to New York where we can work? But the Union needs your monitor, and sooner or later they realize They it. realize nothing. I tell you, I won't stay here another day. Not enough. Put that down to him, cop. Has everybody in Washington got wooden heads? Julie, please. 
What did you say, sir? I asked for a mint julep, and unless I'm mistaken, you heard me ask for a mint julep. I presume you realize, sir, you asked for a southern drink. I beg your pardon, but my name is Adolf Schultz, vice president of Union Loyalty League. Well, now, have pardon you Pardon me, my name is Commodore David G. Farragut of the United States Navy. Oh, I, I, I beg your pardon. I'll grant it if you let me stand around a mint julep. <laughs> sure, sure, why not? Why not? Why not? Why? After all, it's the men of the South we're fighting, not their liquor. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I think. Would you gentlemen care to join us? Oh, Captain Erickson. I'm right glad to see you, sir. Well, I'm glad somebody's glad to see me. How are you, Commodore? Oh, my nephew, Kenneth Reynolds. Oh, how do you do, sir? How do you do? I deem it most friendly if you join me at the bar. This is good friend, Mr. Bushnell. I know, Captain. Ah. What are you doing in Washington? Nothing. All the great work has already been done. Captain Erickson submitted a model of his monitor to the Navy Department. Oh, the monitor. I sure would like to see it. Would you, sir? It's right up in the room. We can take you up there if you like. This should interest you, Bushnell. It should, but it won't. My monitor's not on exhibition. But this may be the chance to... This is final. Nobody sees my monitor. Bartender, another round of mid juleps. And so you see how, without maneuvering around, we keep on firing. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> genius, my dear friend. Sheer genius. You hear that, Kenneth? From the finest shipbuilder in the country. You honor me, sir. Oh, it's I who am honored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just goes to prove what I've always said. Commodore Farragut is an amazing man. Oh, he's a magnificent man. And the mint juleps, were they his idea? Naturally. How many did it take? Surprisingly few. Uncle John started the mellow after the seventh, and would you believe... Oh, do sit down. You're getting far too excited. I've reason to be. I've work to do. I'm finally going to be of some use. And what's Mr. Bushnell like? He's a man of great generosity. He willingly sacrificed his plans and took us in on the contract. Oh, I'm so happy. That's the best news of all. And do you start work immediately? Full speed ahead. Oh, there I go. Let me wind. I, I can't sit still. Oh. We'll build the greatest warship that ever fired a salvo. I'll think of it only as building a great ship. Let's celebrate. How? Would you consider dining sumptuously with me at the Brevoort House? I have a new dress that's just aching to see the Brevoort House. Then I'll call for you in a coach and four. Of course, we'll take Uncle John along. And on second thought, the Commodore. Oh, can't we dine alone? You see, darling, we take Uncle John for financial reasons. And Father? He has the coach. <laughs> <laughs> but only one horse. <laughs> Come on. Oh. <clears throat> Hereafter, I'll fire a salute of at least 21 guns before entering a conservatory. Commodore, you, you, you're just the man I want to see. Uh, uh, will you bring your coach? Uh, uh, will you bring your horse? Uh, you tell him I can't. I'll go home and dress. You better get into your Sunday uniform. We're dining out. What's the matter, dear? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I'm a bit tired. <gasps> well, cheer up, darling. We're going out to celebrate Kenneth's fortune. Kenneth's good fortune. What's disturbing you, dear? Is it bad news? Is it Raymond? Tell me. Raymond has been appointed third in command aboard the Merrimack. It's a promotion, isn't it? Going aboard the Merrimack. Yes. The ship we have to destroy. With the monitor. Ericsson's monitor.
I'm afraid Erickson's monitor didn't do so well in the trial. The steering gear jammed, but it's been fixed. You think it will work now? I do, sir. Many of our naval experts, as you know, report the ship unseaworthy and impracticable for combat duty. I don't agree with them, Mr. Secretary. Good. The President, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Be seated. Lieutenant Gordon, the Secretary tells me that you volunteered to command the monitor. Yes, Mr. President. My compliments. Thank you, sir. Although I share your confidence in the monitor, I should never permit it to go out just yet, were it not that our cause is in desperate straits. I understand, sir. Do not assign a crew. It should be manned solely by volunteers. In view of the many criticisms already heaped upon her, that is very wise, Mr. President. See that each volunteer before signing is warned of the dangers of the adventure and the odds against it. Yes, sir. Assure them, however, that the government will take care of their families, should they not survive. Oh, good luck and Godspeed. Take these men to Lieutenant Green aboard ship. Well, that gives us nine officers and 37 men. It's been more difficult getting volunteers than we expected. Uh, appearance hasn't helped us any. Patty, Mac! We got your word, sir. We're reporting for duty. Oh, I knew I could count on you. How have you been? Fine, sir. Except Patty here has never been quite the same since they lost Molly. Oh. Lieutenant Worden, this is McPherson and Callahan. They serve with me on the Merrimack. Both good men. Glad to have them aboard. Meaning no offense, sir, but how does an able-bodied seaman get aboard such a looking object? Use your head, man. The lieutenant here helped build it. He'll know how to get on it. We'll watch him and do likewise. But I'm not going. Oh, then you're not so daft as I thought you were. I'm sorry, sir. We go to sea in a tin can with him. But if he's not going, well, we are not going But either. they need you, boys. I'd give anything to go, but, Patty, you know that's impossible. I'm no longer in the Navy. Oh, so they don't think you're good enough to sail on. Oh, it isn't that. Reynolds, you know the ship pretty well, don't you? I ought to. How would you like to come along with us? How would I like to come along? Thanks very much, sir, but that's impossible. Why? Well, I've been dis... Dismissed. Yes, I know all about that. But I've been given the right to pick a volunteer crew. Pack your bags and report for duty. Aye, aye, sir. Begging your pardon, sir, if you please. No, of course, aboard to Lieutenant Green. We sail tonight, after dark. Tis relieved I am. You know, I wouldn't like any of my friends to see me and wore that in broad daylight. Aye. These plans you should have in your head. I don't really need them. Well, take them along anyway, for reference, maybe. I wish you were coming along too, Captain. But me? <laughs> You've hit his weakness, Lieutenant Warden. He builds ships, but I don't ride on them. <laughs> I get seasick. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Captain Erickson. You've done splendidly. Nothing unusual. What did you expect? We of the committee are here to make a final tour of inspection before the monitor sails. All right, everything is fixed. The monitor is ready and nothing you can say will even make me mad. We'd better get aboard, Reynolds. May I have a moment to say goodbye, sir? Goodbye? Oh, yes. Just a moment. Reynolds' work on the monitor is finished. What do you know about it? He's reporting for duty, sir. On what authority? I was given the right to select a volunteer crew. Reynolds was dishonorably discharged from the Navy. Captain Gilman, I helped build the monitor. I know every rivet and seam in her. Lieutenant Worden needs me, wants me, and has accepted me for duty. I think his achievement in helping to construct the ship in record time should more than outweigh whatever has happened in the past. Absolutely right. If he had carried out my orders at Norfolk, there'd be no Merrimack threatening us today. I agree with Captain Gilman. This ship's mission is too secretive to include among its officers a man guilty of mutiny. Lieutenant Worden is subject to our orders. This is a case for us to decide. For you to decide? No, I. John Erickson decide. He goes. You forget yourself, sir. Aye, I forget nothing. I don't forget this ship is not paid for, and until then she is mine. If Reynolds don't go, the monitor stays right here, tied to the dock, and you go fight the Merrimack with your speeches. 
I think that settles it, gentlemen. Come, we go. Maybe you uh, find something wrong, eh? Then you don't feel so bad. Darling, our first victory. I'm going after all. Aren't you glad? Should I be? Well, I, I thought for my... Why do you insist upon going? Your work on the monitor is completed. They don't even want you. But darling, this is my one chance. I hardly dared hope for it and has come. Don't you see? This is a chance to vindicate myself. No. There was a time when I didn't even want you to go on with the work. But then I realized that with or without your help, the monitor would be built. But I've got to see it through. You don't realize how vital it is that the monitor succeeds. Its success will spell failure for you and me. My brother is an officer on the Merrimack. Raymond? Raymond. That's why I stood here hoping that those men wouldn't let you go. There's nothing left but to beg you not to. Nothing I can say to you now will ever make you see this as I do. Ken, there's work to do out on the West Coast. They're building harbors and ships. Why do you stand there staring at me? I know that you're going. I can't forgive it. I never will. Don't let me leave you like this. There's no other way. <laughs> What's Erickson's idea in having us here? Well, oh, might as well. You'll never grant us an interview any other place. I've seen some freaks, but that boat certainly takes the prize. Crazy Erickson. Remember when those guns exploded and killed six men on the Princeton? Yeah. They say there's a storm coming up. 20 to 1, none of that crew ever come back. There she goes. The Iron Coffin. A good name for her. Gentlemen, Commodore Buchanan will address you. Our mission is to clear this harbor of enemy craft, of which the Cumberland, the Congress, and the Minnesota now ride before us. Their fire cannot hurt us, so disregard it. And remember that what you do today will be the history of tomorrow. Our homes, our wives, our children shall be free if we succeed. That is all. Yay! Lieutenant, get underway immediately. We'll first attack the Cumberland. Aye, aye, sir. Sound general quarters.
me get the Commodore below. Nothing serious. Hold to your course. Keep firing. Attack the Minnesota. Let's take no risk. We'll finish the rest tomorrow. Secretary, sir, the Merrimack is sweeping the Union fleet before her. She will besiege the northern cities and levy tribute from each of them. Why, even the capital will be at the mercy of the guns of the Merrimack. What of the Monitor? The Monitor? <laughs> if she ever does reach Hampton Roads, which I doubt, and Merrimack will blow her out of the water. Gentlemen, you'll be pleased to hear that Commodore Buchanan is doing very nicely. Unfortunately, however, he is unable to be with us today. Lieutenant Jones assumes command. We will complete the mission started yesterday. By nightfall, I'm confident that there will not be a Union vessel left in Hampton Roads. We will first attack the Minnesota. Aye, aye, sir. Down, General Porter. Down, General Porter's. <laughs> it looks to me like a cheese box on a raft. <laughs> so that's the monitor. That cute little thing? Hey, let's take it aboard and keep it for a pet. <laughs> I like you too. Stand by for broadside. Stand by for broadside. Stand up higher like that. But you're wrong, sir. Look! <laughs> Lieutenant Worden is badly wounded, sir. He ordered you to take command. Lieutenant Ulrich, take charge of the turret. Aye, aye, sir. Colonel, you're in command of the number two gun. Aye, aye, sir. Take over. Aye, aye, sir. Going. I, 
Scheiße. If we don't return now, we'll go aground on the same bar and be at their mercy. Pardon, sir. May I suggest a boarding party? It's a long chance, but we can try. Pull alongside the monitor. Good luck. If we have to capture her, we'll turn back. We're going to lay alongside the monitor. Who volunteer to help me take her? Ah! Hey, come on! Please, Kenneth. I know there isn't much I can say. What is there to say? Raymond died gallantly. You were only doing your duty. There's nothing else. Except to keep on loving you. Long ago, I said that all the wars in all the world couldn't stop me from doing that. I should hate you, but I can't. There's no hate left in me. There's no feeling, nothing. Good morning, Miss Jordan. Why, Mr. Lincoln? I walk here often. It's the trees. They're above the bickerings and them. Oh, uh, may I? This is Kenneth Reynolds. Kenneth Reynolds of the Monitor? Yes, sir. My humble thanks. Tomorrow, a grateful government will publicly acknowledge the wrongs done to you. Mr. President, may I speak plainly? By all means. It is an honor nor reinstatement I seek. I've seen destruction. Men die. I saw my best friend die. I see them too, as I walk this path. If I could only remain forever in the dark, away from the rising sun that brings to light their numbers increased by thousands. But there's no turning back. We must finish the work we're in, lest those who have already gone will have died in vain. You're both young. Yours will be the good fortune to survive. Let's hope that from you will come a generation with vision broad enough to realize the futility of war. I'll never forget this talk, sir. And I shall remember you always, Mr. Lincoln. That's uncommon kind of you, ma'am. Thank you.